Hey, welcome to the Huxley Public Library and Kathy's Corner. Come on in and see what we have. The library is full of great new books, new stories, and new adventures. Just look at all the things we have to explore here. Come on in. We're going to read some stories. Welcome back to Kathy's Corner. You know, last week I really had a good time talking to Dr. May and learning more about how to take care of dogs, my dog especially, and I'm sure you liked learning about taking care of pets too. And I found even more books at the library about pets and dogs, and I got out some of our puppets because you might not have a real pet at home, but it's very fun to pretend we have pets too. So I have a dog and I have my friend Katrina Kitty here as puppets. But the other thing I got to thinking about was books that I might like to read about dogs. And I found a really good one. The name of this book is Until Tuesday. And Tuesday is the name of this dog on the cover. This is a very special dog. He's not an ordinary pet at all. He's a service dog. And a man named Louis Montalvan wrote this book about his dog Tuesday and how much Tuesday helps him every day in life. Service dogs are really important for a lot of different kinds of people and I would really like to learn more about service dogs. So I found out about a place in Des Moines called Pause and Effect and they have some puppies coming today. Would you like to go and meet their puppies? I would. Let's take a trip to Des Moines and go visit the puppies. Hey, I think I found the place. This is pause and effect. Let's go inside and see if we can find someone to tell us even more about service dogs and special pets. Come on, follow me. I did find somebody that can talk to us more about dogs as special pets. This is my new friend, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Nice to meet you. And Nicole is here in Des Moines at her business called Paws and Effects. Now, I'm very curious about the name of your business, Nicole. Why is it called Paws and Effect? Well, pause kind of makes a little bit of a play on the word pause, P-A-U-S-E. So we play on that and it means take a moment mm -hmm. and then effect is to make a difference. So our underlying uh, purpose underneath pause and effect is to take a moment and make a difference. I think that's great. I was just talking to my friends a little bit about dogs as very special pets that can help people out in so many different ways. And that's what you do here, right? Is it help is. Train the dogs. So what kind of dogs do you bring into there? We, had, we saw some of the puppies. What kind of dogs are those? So we bring in Labrador retrievers okay. because they like to retrieve things. So that makes it very easy for them to learn to pick items up and hand them to somebody who might not be able to bend down and pick them okay. up themselves. So to retrieve, I drop something on the floor, the dog will pick it up for me. And it might be something like your car keys or it might mm -hmm. be the remote to the television. And so those dogs are trained to pick it back up and put it in your hands. That would be excellent. Wow. So you bring the puppies here when they're really small. Those puppies we saw you said are just eight weeks old. They are. How long will you have them with a trainer? So they will go to individual homes. So we have okay. volunteers who raise them for 18 months at a time. So they'll come back here once a week and they'll get training. Mm -hmm. But then during the week, they'll stay with their volunteer family. So they're being trained 24-7, really. You just do some special things here. They learn to turn lights on and off here. They learn to open up hinged doors here. Do you think your dog could turn on and off the lights? I don't think my dog would do that. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take for you to teach a dog to do that? It might only take two or three weeks, but we have to wait for the puppies to grow up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that takes longer. <laughs> yes, they are puppies. They want to play a lot. Right. So they're ready for placement when they're 
not playing as much mm -hmm. and they're more settled down and able to be in public without being as playful. Okay. So what, who takes the dogs? Who gets a trained dog from Paws and Effect? We have two different people or two different types of people that we work with. Okay. We work with children who have disabilities. So some of the children may have autism mm -hmm. or they might have other impairments or learning um, problems. And then we also work with combat veterans. So people who've been in the military and might have been injured. Okay, so you might know some kids, or you might have seen kids before, that have a dog that they keep on a leash with them, right, if they're outside, and that dog might have a coat or a special vest. What does that mean? Well, the coat means that they're working. So when they're working, we ask that people refrain or, or kind of not run up and pet them or play with them okay. um, because then it's just distracting for the dog and they can't work as hard for the person they're supposed to be working for. So this becomes that child's or that person's very best friend. It does. And they work together. So if um, a child has a service dog and they're out in public, what is that dog doing? How is it working? Sometimes those dogs can tell if a child's about to have a seizure, or sometimes okay. that dog can help a child from not getting as emotional. So we don't always know specifically, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we'll never know. But that dog is their friend and mm -hmm. helps them through those times. Right. Or the dog can warn that they might need more help, or even a doctor. Right. In the case they of can. it's a seizure. Or sometimes dogs are just helping somebody balance better or walk okay. more easily. Okay. So, so it's hard to know sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very special training that it you're is. doing here. Hmm. So kids, you said, with disabilities can have a service dog, but you also talked about soldiers and our veterans might have a service dog. Mm -hmm. So if they were wounded right. physically, right. Uh, how would a dog help them then? So sometimes a dog can help them balance. Sometimes a dog can help pick things up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a dog can just have a backpack and help carry things for them if they're not able to oh. have things on their body. Some, so, of the, some of the dogs will wake them up from nightmares. I've seen people with crutches or a cane or maybe using a wheelchair that couldn't carry something, and then the dog could help them carry. Right, so things that we might carry easily, like our keys or mm -hmm. our wallet or some small groceries, sometimes they're not able to. They might be too injured to carry it in a backpack, so the dog can carry some of those smaller things. That's great. That helps them be independent. Yes. Independence is an important thing. We don't always want to have to rely on other people. Yeah. So, okay, you mentioned nightmares. That's very interesting to me. We all have bad dreams sometimes, but if a dog can wake a person up from a bad dream, how does that help? Well, then the nightmare might not go on as long. And so mm -hmm. that's helpful because sometimes people will have nightmares that are over a very long period of time or they'll repeat several mm -hmm. times in a night. And sometimes if we can stop that the very first time it's starting, people get more sleep and they're more rested. And we all need our sleep. We all hear that that's important. So if the dog can even help get a good night's sleep. Well, I found a great place at Pause and Effect. We have a library behind us. There's libraries everywhere we go. So why do you have some of these books, Nicole? Well, some of the books are for children. Some of the children like to come and read to our service dogs and read out loud. Our dogs huh. enjoy spending time with children. Yes. So it's nice for the dogs to have time around children. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of children's books. And then we also have lots of books about dog training. So sometimes our volunteers enjoy learning more mm -hmm. about dog training or reading stories about dogs. So some of those host families that are taking the puppies today... There's some of those puppies are going to get picked up. They can get some extra materials from your library. It's just like when you come to the Huxley Public Library and check out books to learn more, they offer the same thing here. I think that's great. Well, there are going to be some other people coming to Pause and Effect today we'd like to talk to. I'm really curious why other people get involved. I know for me, I read a book, and the title of that book was called Until Tuesday, and Tuesday is the name of a, a man's dog. And it got me very interested in what service dogs do. 
So I would like to talk to some other people around here and, and find out why they are people, interested. Yeah, we have other people here today that would be interested in sharing why they, That's great. Why they volunteer with us. Nicole, thanks. Let's go back outside and visit those puppies. I like them. Well, Nicole introduced me to her friend Ashley, and Ashley gets to take one of those puppies home today because she is one of the raisers and trainers for the service dogs. So Ashley, have you trained a lot of dogs before? I have. I've been training dogs for almost eight years now. So do you like it? I do. I love it. <laughs> so when you're training a service dog, is there kind of a special reward from that, knowing that it's going to help a child or help us a veteran? Definitely. I've helped uh, with fosters such as raising shelter dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and going to a good home is a fantastic reward, but knowing they're going to go to a veteran or somebody where they're actually going to be used as a tool to help them better themselves, it's a huge reward. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> well, I see these gift bags. Yes. Do puppies get gift bags? The razors do. The razors get the gift the bag. Okay. Well, what kinds of things are in there, Ashley, that you need to well, take home with you today? Definitely a treat bag. Oh yes. A treat bag, and it always, oh, and it always has a clicker, which we might find in there later. Okay. <laughs> but this is uh, what we use when we take the dogs out in public, mm -hmm. and when we're training, we put it on our pouch, and that way we can reward the dogs. So when they good. do something right, they get a click or they get a treat, mm -hmm. and then they are just constantly reinforced yep. with their good behavior. Exactly. Okay. I would do things for treats. <laughs> we have got some good chew toys. Oh, That's yes. Puppy doesn't need a chew toy. Yes. Puppies <laughs> chew on a lot of things, don't yes. they? Yes. Yes, they do. Yeah. My puppy chewed up my shoes once. But oh, no. Oh, well. And then, of course, we have the front line and the heart guard because we have to keep our puppies yes. healthy. Yes. So front line keeps fleas and bugs and ticks off yep. the dogs so yep. they can go outside and play. Just yep. like when you put bug spray on or special things to keep you safe outside. Yep. This is for the dog. Mm -hmm. And heart guard, what's that for? Heart guard is um, a dewormer as okay. well as a preventative. So it helps, uh, it prevents any kind of heartworms. Okay. Um, yeah. So just like when you go to the doctor and get shots or take medicine, we yep. have to take care of our dogs and all our pets the same way. Okay, what else? We've got some food toys. Ah, so food yes. Food toys are very helpful. Let's see, maybe I had another one in here. Food toys are super helpful because we can actually put the dog's meal in there. Yeah. And then the dog has to roll it around and play to get their food out. There's a lot of so work it's like involved. A okay. It keeps them busy. So, and then they have to really think too, yep. don't they? So it's brain exercise, physical exercise, exactly. and they earn a treat. Then we got another good chew toy. Yep. Nice and hard. That one I bet you can throw across the yard. Yep. Don't want them to be eating anything. And then looks like I've got a whole bunch of treats in here too. Ah, she can fill up that <laughs> treat bag. That's good. This is fun. Do you know what? What are, are those? Oh, I bet I do know what that is. Poop Listen, we bags. have. Yep, got to clean up after <laughs> the dogs. They don't wear diapers. Not those puppies. So we got to clean up. <laughs> We've got a leash, and I've got a very nice service vest for oh. my puppy to wear. Now, Nicole and I talked a little bit about the vest and yeah. what that means. Yep. So when you put that on the puppy, mm -hmm. and you're out in public, what what can't happen then? Yep. Um, what can't happen is people just coming up and petting the dog. So this is the kind of vest we were talking about with Nicole, and it says, cause and effect, the name of their business. And so this tells us this puppy is at work. Yes. So we don't yep. go pet it. We don't go ruffle his ears. Yep. That's what I like to do is just rub their soft ears. <laughs> it's hard ears. to leave them alone, especially when they're puppies. But this <laughs> teaches the dog as yep. well, right? Yep. So will you put this vest on right away? Uh, if I take them out in public, yes. Okay. So then they know too, yep. right? I'm exactly. wearing this. I'm a working and then dog. And we come home and we take it off, they can 
have fun with their dog friends at home. And then you can ruffle their ears. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, and I got an antler. Oh, because dogs like bones. Yep, it's but, kind of like a bone. But should we give our dogs bones that we have at home? No, nope. You don't no. want to give bones that you have at home, especially cooked ones. Or, yeah. Yeah. They don't like Not cooked good. food. We like our food cooked. <laughs> dogs don't. Not good. This, so. however, is safe. Okay. But, and we have a collar. Look how small it is. I know. <laughs> now, we saw those little eight-week-old puppies, but when this dog is grown and is a working dog, how yep. big will he be? He will be anywhere between 60 and 80 pounds. So that's a pretty tall dog. Very big dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's a good thing. Yes. And then last but not least, I just have a tug toy. So tug toys are cool. As you can see, it has like a hole up here. Uh-huh. So um, this one, I could take the knot out and I could actually loop it through there and put it on like a fridge handle. Ah. And then teach the dog to pull on the tug toy and it would open the fridge. Okay, so this isn't a toy. <laughs> it's, it's a learning tool and a toy. Okay, but you could get your dog to open the refrigerator and get you a snack. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> Which we think just sounds funny, but it's really important for yes, someone that maybe can't move to the kitchen by themselves yep. or needs extra help. Maybe they're not strong yep. enough. This would also go on like a lever handle of a door. Okay. To like go into a bedroom. So you could hang it on the lever handle and then when the dog pulled it, the door would open. The door would open. Yeah. Well, Ashley, <laughs> I really appreciate you talking to us today and yep. I would love to come back and, and see the dogs after they're trained. Maybe Absolutely. we need to come back in a year and a half. Yep. Two years before this dog moves on. Yep. Is it hard to give up those dogs it's after hard you've to trained give up, them? But very rewarding, like we said. Yeah. <laughs> do um, people that get your dogs come back and visit you? They do. Um, most most of the people do. They always come back, or at least they send pictures mm -hmm. or something like that. They definitely keep in touch. Well, we have some books back at the library with great pictures. I'm going to share with the kids, and <laughs> we looked at your library here. I'm so glad you have books that yes. um, can be read to the dogs, yep. even, and that people can check out and learn more. That's Very great. Cool. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> Thank you. So I was getting ready to leave Pause and Effect and look who I found. This is Leo and Leo's razor, Audrey. And Audrey just came tonight to pick him up and she gets to take him home, but not forever. Dude, not forever. I get to take Leo home until he's about a year and a half to two years old. So you are really important in helping to train this puppy for someone. Yeah, so I'm kind of Leo's person for the next year and a half to two mm -hmm. years and he'll learn to bond with me and get his cues from me and then we'll kind of transition him over to someone that needs him. Hi. So when he's grown up a little bit, year and a half, two years old, will you visit his new house and help those people? Um, nope. Our head trainer and our director does home checks for all the people that are going to get dogs. Okay. So they'll visit their house, they'll work with them, and then we'll have a two-week placement course where the puppies get turned in mm -hmm. their dogs at that point, and they'll get to work with our head trainer and our director and transition over to working with their new person. Okay. Practice outings with them, and then they'll get to go home and live with their new person. So someday, Leo is going to be a big help to somebody. Yes. We don't know who yet, we though. Don't we don't know who. Either a veteran or a kid with autism. Uh-huh. So, Audrey, why do you do this? I do it, one, because I love dogs. Mm -hmm. And so it's a great way to get to work with dogs. And I love to give back and help people. Uh, I used to work for the National Guard as a contractor. And so getting to see kind of how much the family goes through when their loved one comes home and is struggling mm -hmm. and seeing what a big difference it makes when they can do better. Uh -huh. um, I just think it's a really nice way to give back to people that have given a lot for us. I think so, too. We talked to a veteran around Memorial Day. And I think this just reminds me of what we learned about Memorial Day and about veterans and um, how just important it is to remember their service to us. Yeah. And a lot of us have friends um, with kids that might mm -hmm. have disability issues or we have right. somebody in our schools with autism. Yep. And this is something we know that can help them. Yes, it helps a lot. We've definitely seen uh, our, our recipients make a lot of progress after getting their puppy. So I have to give Leo to you? He's going to come back to my house, yeah. Okay. He's, he's you could raise one yourself. <laughs> I could. I could, I could. Right. I think Leo's pretty special. He's a good so, guy. He's thanks. Pretty special stuff. He is. Thank you so much Thank for stopping you. to talk to me. I'm excited for you. Thanks. We're going to go back to the library in Huxley, and I have books about service dogs, and I'm going to share those with my friends next. That would be cool. Thanks. Thank you. I absolutely loved those puppies, didn't you? 
and I think it's really special to think about how they're going to be raised and trained and they'll grow up to be dogs that really help other people. And when I got back to the library, I found some more books about dogs and other animals helping people. Here's one called Nubs, the true story of a mutt, a marine, and a miracle. So this is a picture of Nubs the dog, and here's a story about how he helped a marine. And I found two books about horses, one about the Pony Express and one about Goliath. Goliath actually pulled a fire engine. That's a really helpful animal, don't you think? So those are some great books you could find here at the library about animals that help us. And remember I told you about my book I liked so much, Until Tuesday? Well, Louis Montalvan, who wrote this book about his dog Tuesday, was really smart. And he knew that not just grown-ups would want to learn about his dog, but he knew that kids would want to learn too. So he also wrote about Tuesday in a children's story with some great pictures of Tuesday. And he called this book, Tuesday Tucks Me In. Now I think that's a funny title because we usually think about putting our pets away at night or picking up our toys, parents tucking kids in, but this dog, Tuesday, tucks Louie into bed at night. That's part of his job as a service dog. Let's look at some of the pictures that we have here. Here's our author, Mr. Montalvan. Actually, he's Captain Montalvan. He was in the service. He's wearing his uniform, and there's his service dog, Tuesday. And he says, in the morning, every morning, my friend Louie wakes up to this. <laughs> He's an awfully nice dog, isn't he? Look at that. Louie tells him what time it is to get up and makes sure he's up and out of bed on time every morning. Off to the kitchen for my bowl, Tuesday says. And then he gets Louie's shoes for him, and he helps make sure that Louie takes his medicine. The dog reminds him that that's the thing he needs to do. Here's a picture of the author when he was still in the service in a helicopter. That was a hard time for him, and he came home with some pain, and it was hard for him to live by himself. So that's why he wanted a service dog like Tuesday, a service dog like they train at Paws and Effect. So when sometimes it's scary to walk down a busy street or he hears a lot of strange noises, Tuesday helps keep him calm, helps him know the right way to walk. <laughs> Look at that, Tuesday even got in a taxi, rides in the car with him. He waits for him wherever he needs to go. Ah, but now Tuesday has his vest off. Remember we talked at Pause and Effect how the service dogs wear a special vest to mark them? But when they're just playful dogs in the park, he doesn't have to wear that. And he can meet friends and play with other dogs. Ah, but then Tuesday's back at work when he's with Captain Montalvan. There's a great picture of him wearing that vest so that we know he's a service dog and he's working. Louis doesn't like crowds. So if he has Tuesday to hug, helps him keep calm. It's a pretty good dog, a very good friend. If the ride is long, he keeps him calm just by keeping his nose on his feet, just like that. Oh, wow. Would you like to take your dog to a park with a big roller coaster and all the noise? What a day, what a day, says Louie is happy and Tuesday is happy. Back home, they can sit down and have dinner together. And at home, Tuesday doesn't wear that service dog vest, does he? They just sit and enjoy their time together. Tuesday plays like any other dog. But at night, when it's ready to go, time to go to bed and ready, time to get ready for bed, then Tuesday gets a good brushing, even his teeth. Louie takes good care of his service dog. And they give each other a hug. And Tuesday tucks him in, just like the title says. I'm really glad we got to learn more about dogs being service dogs and helpers and beyond just being our pets. 
but it's important for us to remember what Dr. May taught us last week about taking care of them and important for us to remember how we can take care of service dogs and how they take care of us. For soldiers, for Marines, for kids, for blind people, for deaf people, people that have an illness called epilepsy have service dogs. There's a lot of reasons for us to really take care of them and remember to keep them in our lives. So I hope that you will learn more about places like Cause and Effect and learn more about how dogs can help us and just be our friends. Thanks for coming back to Kathy's Corner today. I'll see you next week.